apparently we don't need data engineers data scientists need better tooling at least that is the premise of devin's post that you can find here on towards data science that's clearly a very sensationalistic title that's meant to make you want to click you know it's clearly meant to make us data engineers a little bit triggered because obviously as data engineers we are a necessary component whereas data scientists are a luxury and when i say that i mean data engineers don't just serve data scientists we also serve the business you know we serve analysts we serve product managers we are not limited to serving data scientists whereas data science is work that comes later once you've got your data all in order so the title alone is clearly meant to get us triggered into wanting to click and to read more on Devin's opinion. So clearly his clickbait title has worked and I've definitely read through this article and I wanted to go through it and kind of give my opinion on what I think about it. I think in some ways I see where Devin's coming from, but in some ways I think he has a very data science focused perspective where it's really limited to looking at it from a data scientist lens and not a business lens, right? Because I think it's a much more complex problem when you're talking about end-to-end -end data flows. It's not simply, you know, putting data science on top of your data. Oftentimes data engineering plays a very important role, which I would like to discuss in this video. And we'll kind of, again, dive through this article and see why Devin thinks data engineers are quote unquote, not necessary. Data scientists just apparently need better tools. So let's look into his article. So just starting out with the subtitle of his article, you'll see the role of data engineers exists as we know it because of the lack of adequate tooling for data scientists. I would already start to, again, disagree with this statement. Data engineers have essentially existed in one form or another for the last probably 30 years, you know, since kind of data warehousing has existed. Yes, obviously data engineering has molded and changed and evolved um, a lot. But, you know, before data engineering, there were things like ETL developers and data warehousing developers and BI developers and things of that nature. Again, data engineers don't just support data scientists. We support data analysts. We support the business. We've been around for a long time helping businesses answer questions by trying to manage, remodel, and store data in some form of either cloud data warehouse or data lake. Again, much before I think a lot of data science became popular, there was a lot of some form of data engineering going on. Whether you called it ETL development or data architect, you know, a lot of that has all just kind of morphed into one role over the last few years. So again, already going to disagree with this first portion of his title. After that, again, I would disagree with his very first statement where it says in most companies, data engineers support the data scientists in various ways. Do we play a role in supporting data scientists? Yes, but we support the business and not data scientists themselves. We're not only focused on data scientists, we're also focused on analysts, again, product managers, a whole host of other roles besides data scientists. Data scientists make up a very small portion of companies and us as data engineers play a much larger role than just giving them data or optimizing their pipelines so that they can actually run in production, which he goes into in this next set of lines where he talks about the fact that data engineers spend a lot of their time productionizing the notebooks and other scripts that data scientists have put together, which yes, I have spent time, you know, productionizing code for data scientists who aren't as keen towards developing optimized code, but maybe are really good at creating, you know, models and things of that nature. It's just, you know, two different problems and it's very normal to not have someone that can do both. But again, I spend a lot of my time doing a ton of other things besides just productionizing data scientist code. I also spend a lot of time creating data pipelines that maybe go to external and internal vendors. So maybe I pull data from an external vendor. Maybe I push data to an external vendor. I also spend a bunch of time uh, data modeling and setting up systems to actually track data historically and not just pull data and copy it from production systems. A lot of my time is not spent supporting data scientists, but honestly supporting the business. So that's where I think I already wanna take this point. Now, I think perhaps some of this sentiment from this article and maybe some of the reason for this title and trying to get us to click on it was because of the titles that were, again, sensationalistic in themselves. He was also reading other titles where saying, you know, we don't need data scientists, we need data engineers. So maybe he was taking that personally, or maybe again, it's just a great title. I'm not even saying that this title is bad. Personally, as a content creator, this is the game we play. We create content and we have to make it interesting to you, our viewers and readers. So I totally understand where he's coming from when he's trying to combat these other titles that sound just as sensationalistic or are just meant to capture your attention. You know, we don't need data scientists. No one's saying that. I'm not saying that. But I would also like to clarify that data engineers play a very different role than he has depicted. If we keep scrolling down, he then tries to go into the role of kind of data scientists and the help that they need from data engineers. Now, he is accurate, I think, in stating the fact that a lot of the times data engineering roles and data scientist roles can sometimes get meshed together, or sometimes data engineers are expected to do data science work 
And sometimes data scientists are expected to do data engineering work. This is not abnormal. This is pretty normal in general. You know, sometimes I'm expected to put code into production from data scientists, or sometimes even meant to create my own models, which is why I often talk about end-to-end -end data solutions rather than just data engineering by its own, because we often have to create these systems. Now, truth be told, if you ask a data scientist to develop something like an ETL, they will likely develop it the way that they know how, which is in, you know, a combination of like Jupyter Notebooks and R, and I've definitely seen these happen. It's terrifying as a data engineer to come into those situations, but I'm sure if I were to build some sort of data science model, a data scientist would feel the same about the process that maybe I took on uh, to build it as well. We have enough skills to kind of dabble in our counterparts field, but maybe not enough to know all of the nuances. And that's okay. And that's why I would recommend having both a data scientist and a data engineer and not just one or the other. And now this next point where he makes the fact that, you know, data science is messy because it reflects the real world. I mean, data engineering is messy. That's what we end up doing, which is we try to reconstruct the real world and put it into some sort of data warehouse. I brought this up before in our data engineering projects. You know, we don't just do ad hoc analysis, which is what often data scientists do. And they don't often maybe care about developing data as a product where we often don't just put together notebooks. We build pipelines that are meant to be robust and repeatable and meant to support multiple teams, not just one data scientist. Whereas a data scientist might have a very specific set of questions they're trying to answer, a very specific model they're trying to develop. And yes, they might be pulling from very specific data sets and wanna make it from there productionized, but it's so focused in one area that oftentimes it's not built out to be all encompassing, but it's very specific and answers a very specific set of problems. So you don't need to create a whole bunch of tables just to support this one model, at least not on that core data. You might be building some tables to do some model running, or maybe you're storing some of the different outputs that you're creating over time. But the truth be told that we are often, as data engineers, meant to try to create the reflection of the real world in our data warehouses. That's why we store things like slowly changing dimensions and other things of that nature, to try to recreate this world that we see in data, right? Like that's often what I reference in terms of data. It's a derivative of things that happen in the business world, you know, transactions that occur that goes into the data warehouse, people changing roles and jobs. We try to store that in the data warehouse or things of that nature. That's all stored in such a way that everyone, data analysts, data scientists, product managers, whoever knows how to query can access the data successfully and easily and not just forced to kind of use this one Jupyter notebook to pull out some specific maybe P values that they're looking for in this one specific set of questions that they're looking to answer. Next is his kind of point about Spark. He discusses the fact that, you know, why don't data scientists just learn more technical concepts like Spark? And I do think it is a little silly to expect data scientists to learn every technical skill and I also think that Spark isn't the only technical skill that's often valuable, you know? There are many options besides having to learn Spark itself where, you know, data scientists could use something more familiar, hopefully to them, which is like SQL or some other similar tooling where you can still get the benefit of distributed computing without having to necessarily know all of the nitty gritty. Obviously, if you wanna do fine tuning, you're going to need to know Spark. And that's where I think some people pigeonhole data engineering, but data engineering is such a broad set of skills that we do so much more than Spark. Again, data modeling, SQL, ETL pipelines, data visualizations, and just a whole host of other skills that just putting us down into Spark and saying that we just translate data scientists code into Spark so that it's optimized is not accurate. You know, we spend a lot of other times supporting a ton of other roles more than just data scientists. From there, he kind of discusses more of the shortcomings of Pandas, which I kind of understand, you know, I think Pandas is great, but one of the problems with code in general is the more and more essentially functions and clauses that you can access, the more complex you can make code, right? And one of the nice things about SQL, for example, is there is kind of a limited amount of clauses that you can use. And in turn, there are only so many ways you can write your overall SQL statements. In comparison, Pandas is so freeing and allows you to do so many things that it almost automatically incurs a natural messiness to it. I know that's not necessarily what he was referring to here, but I think that is kind of part of the problem. After that, he kind of refocuses and brings back the fact that data engineers are kind of forced to deal with this messiness. Again, I think that data engineers do so much more than just support data scientists. And it's such a broad set of skills that yes, do we play a role there? Of course. But this is often one of the reasons that data engineers are underappreciated is we're kind of just expected to make everyone else's work shine. You know, we're expected to make software engineering look good by pulling in the right data so that they can actually get analysts to look at it correctly and then, you know, tell them what features they should build next. And then data scientists expect us to, you know, productionize their pipelines and optimize it and make them work well. 
Whereas we kind of don't have this autonomy to tell people like, hey, this is what we think you should do, or at least not as much. And he references scale a lot in this article, which is probably because he has built a library called Modin, where I think he's really trying to maybe either replace the, this work that he's referencing in terms of replacing Pandas or make it more scalable. And I have actually watched several of his videos where he clearly is a very smart person that's developed I think a pretty sophisticated new library to try to, again, deal with all the messiness of data and just make it more scalable overall. But if you're gonna make a clickbait title that's going to naturally trigger people, you should expect someone to respond, which I am doing in this video. Then for the rest of this article, he kind of continues to point out the problems and kind of points out this overall workflow. Again, focus on this data scientist, data engineering relationship that I think is slightly skewed, mostly towards the fact that data scientists are kind of the center of this perspective versus the fact that it's really a team sport and, you know, data engineers play a much bigger role than just supporting data scientists. And then he kind of discusses this whole, you know, what then should data engineers do? And he talks about the fact that, you know, data engineers should be building tools that help empower data scientists. Again, very focused on data engineering supporting data science which isn't accurate. You know, we do so much more than just supporting data science. That's what I think is the problem with this article. Again, I think from what I've seen, he's constructing an interesting solution that I'm going to have to dig into. But overall, I think his perspective isn't accurate for all of data engineering. And some of that is because data engineering is such a broad field and I don't blame him for it. But I would like to point this out because, you know, there are plenty of people who might be looking into data engineering as a career choice and they might mistake what data engineers do. In fact, I've actually asked a data scientist to kind of build me a data pipeline once when they were trying to take a data engineering intern role. And once I looked at it, I clearly was very quickly reminded that data scientists and data engineers look at data pipelines very differently. The way they built it was kind of in a Jupyter notebook and really built for a one-time solution rather than a repeatable solution that's, you know, looking at the data as a product. But instead, the solution they built me was more of an analysis-focused solution. So it was just something I think interesting in terms of data engineers versus data scientists. Just to be clear, in no way am I like angry at this article. I think there are some people who uh, had some angry statements, like if we open up comments, you can see that there were plenty of people kind of referencing that this was clearly a triggering article and there's plenty of solutions that uh, data scientists can use that are easy to scale and maybe even a little more low code. And of course, people have various opinions on this whole concept, you know, data engineers versus data scientists. I think some people are very much ready to die on certain hills that I personally am not uh, ready to die on. I think I understand the point that Devin was trying to come across with. But overall, I think his view of data engineering is a little too data science focused. And I think you should understand kind of maybe more of the history of where data engineering is coming from and the role we're trying to play in businesses besides just companies like Intel, where he's worked. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, do check out this article. I don't think it's necessarily wrong. I just think it needs to take a more holistic view of the end-to-end -end data kind of flows that we build as both data engineers, data scientists, data analysts, and so on. And with that, guys, I just want to say thanks so much for watching this video. Do take a moment to smash that like button and subscribe. I really appreciate all your support over the last few uh, months, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.